Hey guys, it's Fadi with Max Tech, and we have literally been waiting almost 10 years for this moment, the redesigned iMac, and this video is not just gonna be a simple unboxing, we're gonna be comparing this to the iMac and the iMac Pro in terms of everything from the design, the physical dimensions, the webcams, the speakers, the microphones, everything including the performance as well so let's go ahead let's unbox this all right let's get this on the side wow this thing oh my goodness oh that's so lightweight oh that's insane got our keyboard nice let's grab all of this stuff out of here i got most of this unboxed i got the keyboard got the mouse the power adapter with the brick the power cable but now this is the moment of truth we have the blue 24 inch imac and i really want to see how this looks because a lot of people have been talking about it. So, this is gonna be the reveal. Woo! Wow, that blue color, guys. This is an iMac unboxing like we have literally never seen before. Wow, look at that. That is a nice finish. Oh my goodness. Oh, and that Apple logo, it's like a nice, like plastic. Oh man, that's nice. Woo! And of course, on this side, you got the hello text. Let's look at those white bezels. Ooh. <laughs> wow. A lot of people were dissing on these white bezels, but man, it actually looks pretty nice. And of course, guys, since this is a comparison, I have the 27 inch iMac, the Intel right here. Unfortunately, we don't have the 21 and a half inch because we never had that because it sucked. But this thing's gonna be nice. So I wanna compare some things, guys. Of course, we have the color matched accessories. Got the blue magic mouse, the blue keyboard, the blue power cable, and like, wow, this magnetic connector. That is so unique. Even the inside of the connector is blue. That is just crazy. Of course, we have the power adapter, which we did not have because it's on the inside of the old Intel Max. And this one actually does have the ethernet jack. So that's kind of cool that they can do that and route it through the uh, power supply. Now the first thing I want to do before we get into the iMacs themselves is compare the accessories. So as you can see, here's the blue and here's the original silver. And as you can tell, it's pretty nice. It looks like they chose to go with those uh, light blue rubber pads instead of black here. But other than that, man, they're basically identical. No real difference between these two. But now if we move on to the keyboards, the edges are much more rounded. And because of that, the keys themselves in the corners are rounded as well. And the big new thing here is Touch ID right here, replacing this useless eject key that we never ever use, so useless. We now have Touch ID, so we're gonna be testing that out a little bit later and see how it works. But I definitely say that I like this blue. And we do get some new keys as well. Right here we have some blank keys that were never used on this iMac, but now we have this search key, the microphone, we have do not disturb, the media keys, all of that is new. We have the new uh, language globe emoji key right there. So definitely some differences, but not that big of a differences. All right, now let's compare the iMacs themselves. And I know this is the 27 inch, but this is gonna help you see how thin and light this thing is. Like, look at this, easy, like super light. But in terms of the thinness, Dude, this is so heavy. This is so heavy compared to the Apple Silicon model. But let's put these together. And if you can look at the uh, top camera, you can see how incredibly thin that 24 inch is. Oh my goodness. Look at how thick this 27 inch Intel iMac is. That's nuts. And you could also see the stand size, much different. And another thing I noticed is that the thickness of the chin is actually basically identical on both of these except that they did choose to get rid of the Apple logo, which is kind of weird, but it's definitely minimalistic. It definitely looks good. Now on the back, there are definitely some huge differences. We have these air vents that are gone on the back of the 24 inch iMac. They're just not there. We also have this RAM access slot on the 27 inch that is also gone. The RAM is now soldered on. You are not gonna be able to replace it yourself. What's cool about the 24 inch is that the exhaust vents and the speaker vents are all on this strip on the bottom. So it's really nice and clean. And also take a look at these two strips, the uh, rubber pads. This is different compared to the old iMacs and it actually matches the leaked renders, the leaked CAD files that uh, John Prosser showed off 
on the new uh, MacBook Air that's supposed to be coming later. So that's kind of nice. And just to show you guys the bottom of the iMac, we had these vents as well. And you can see that the design for the rubber pad strip was different compared to the new one. So yeah, pretty interesting. Now the last thing I wanna show you guys is the difference in Apple logos. They had like a metallic chrome Apple logo here and they totally went to a different kind of like plastic insert that's very light and the Apple logo is obviously much larger on this one compared to the old one. And I'd say like, I really like the look of this. This looks really good. Now the one thing that's a little bit disappointing with the new one is the ports. As you can see right here, we have a wide selection. We have the SD card, we have the headphone jack, we have four USB A's, and of course we have two Thunderbolts and the ethernet compared to just four USB C's with two of them being Thunderbolt. So it kind of sucks to lose those other ports, especially the SD card slot but we do have right here on the side, we have the headphone jack, so that's still pretty nice. And the last finishing touch that I love on the 24 inch is the new magnetic power cable. I'm gonna show you guys the old method, which definitely was kind of tough. You'd have to plug it in like that, but the worst part was unplugging it. Like you gotta pull and yank it out. Definitely a bit annoying on the old Intel Max, but check this out, one-handed, just like that easy, magnetic, and hey, wow, you actually have to pull pretty hard. Definitely easier on that thing, but with one hand, you can plug it in and unplug it. Definitely nice and convenient, and I don't think you're gonna unplug it on accident. And one thing that I just noticed while plugging these in, the power cable on the 24 inch is like twice as long as this. This is a little bit annoying if you're trying to plug in somewhere further away, so that's really convenient. And there we go, we are powered on, and we are greeted with all of this hello text for the first sign on. That's awesome, Apple just killed it with this thing. We're going through the setup and we are now at the Touch ID section, as you can see, so let's go ahead, hit continue, and it's working just fine, just, just like it's always been, no issues at all. And now that we're fully set up, let's do the comparison and we're gonna be getting into things like the speakers, the webcams, and the performance. I do wanna mention that this is the $1,700 model, that means it has the 16 gigs of RAM, it has the eight core GPU, and of course it has the Touch ID Magic Keyboard and the Ethernet, so that's the updated model. And this right here is the 2020 27 inch iMac, and it's for $2,300. It has the 5500 XT graphics, it has the 3.8 gig, eight core i7, and it has 64 gigs of RAM that we upgraded ourselves. But anyway, it's 1700 versus 2300 plus the RAM. So let's go ahead and run some tests and compare them. And the first test we're doing is the Blackmagic disk speed test to test the speed of the SSD. All right, so 2300 on the right, and it's looking like 2800 on the read. And then over here, we have 2200 on the right and 2100 on the read. So we are definitely getting improved read speeds on the M1, which is really nice. And now let's get into the CPU performance. We're gonna be testing out Geekbench 5. All right, we've got our scores, and this is actually really impressive. 1743 for the single core, compared to 1269 on the $2,300 iMac. That's 37% faster single core performance, and it's even faster than the iMac Pro's single core performance as well. And then if we look at multi-core, this iMac is actually faster because it has an eight core, that's eight high performance cores, and it's an i7, so we're getting 8800 compared to 7400. And surprisingly, this M1 iMac is not that far off from the iMac Pro, so that's really good performance for $1,300 if you're gonna get the base model, but of course we have the $1,700 model. And now let's go ahead and test the graphics performance, but before we do that, you are gonna time travel into the future and you are gonna listen to the speaker and the webcam and microphone comparison. <laughs> I just listened to those speakers and honestly, I'm a little bit underwhelmed with the volume of the 24 inch iMac. Like the sound quality is really, really good. Everything's nice, crisp, clear. The highs and vocals are really, really good. 
but the volume on even the 27 inch is much, much louder. And then going to the iMac Pro, it's a massive difference. And the bass on the iMac Pro is just insane, especially compared to this. So while I might say that the quality is the best on the 24 inch, it's just missing that volume that I really like. This is the webcam and microphone quality on the 2020 27 inch iMac with the 720p FaceTime camera. This is the microphone and webcam quality on the 2017 27 inch iMac Pro with the 1080p FaceTime camera. And this is the webcam and microphone quality on the 2021 24 inch iMac with the 1080p FaceTime camera and the M1 ISP. Welcome back to the performance testing. Let's go ahead and start that metal graphics Geekbench test. All right, we have our scores back and we have around 22,000 metal points on the 24 inch iMac and 42,000 on the Intel iMac. Now, of course, that's because that's the 27 inch model and this 24 inch is in no way meant to replace it. We are expecting M1X iMacs to come later this year and the performance is gonna be killer more than what you're seeing here. And compared to the iMac Pro, it's 2.4 times faster than this 24 inch iMac, but what can you expect? This still gives you really great performance. Now, before I get into the real world tests, I do wanna check out Speedometer. That's a browser benchmark. Now, if you're getting this 24 inch iMac, mainly for web browsing, a little bit of productivity and stuff like that, web browsing is extremely important to you guys. So let's go ahead and run this web browsing test and see what performance we get. That is what I call killer browsing performance, 226 compared to 163, that is 38% faster web browsing performance. That's gonna be awesome for a lot of you guys because this iMac is gonna feel much more snappy than this one, and this is definitely cheaper. And on top of that, because the SSD is faster, it's gonna feel snappy, much more snappy than that one. And because the SSD is also faster, that's gonna add on to it even more, especially since you have Apple Silicon, which is like in line with Apple software, much better than all the drivers and other Intel issues you have to deal with with this guy. Now let's move on to a real world gaming test. This is GFX Bench Metal. So let's start the 1440p Aztec Ruins high tier off screen test on each of these and see if we have a difference in graphics performance. All right, this is very interesting. We have 81 FPS on the 24 inch and we have 135.6 FPS on the 27 inch iMac. Now that's interesting because and Geekbench Metal, this iMac was 90% faster, but now it's only 67% faster. That means that the unified architecture or something else is making it more efficient for gaming. And now let's move on to Cinebench R23. This is the real CPU stress test. And we're not gonna do the 10 minute one, we're just gonna do the single test because I don't wanna sit there for that long. We got stuff to do. We have iPad Pros to test as well. So if you are not already subscribed, do so right now because we have the eight gig and the 16 gig version of the new M1 iPad Pro, and that is gonna be interesting. Guys, I don't know if you can hear this, but the fan on the Intel iMac is chugging along. It's going while the M1 is literally silent. I can't hear anything at all right here. We have our scores back and no wonder the fan was kicking because this iMac is 64% faster in Cinebench. That is a huge difference. This iMac is still getting about 7,700 points, which is really good. I mean, it's faster than the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it does not compare to this 27 inch which we really didn't expect it to, but in real world performance tests, which I'm not gonna test right now, but we tested the M1 Mac Mini, and comparing the M1 Mac Mini to the iMac and the iMac Pro, it actually did really well in a lot of the different tests because you have the updated and new encoders and you have a bunch of other stuff like the unified memory that makes it perform very well, especially in Xcode where it was even faster than our Mac Pro. So in real world tests, the M1 24 inch iMac is still gonna be killer. So there you guys go. That was all of the testing between the 24 inch and the 27 inch iMac and the iMac Pro in terms of the performance. And I've gotta say for $1,300 or $1,700 like this one, 
you are really getting a lot of value because that 4.5K display is really nice. You're getting this really nice and new design. You're getting the colors, you're getting everything. You're getting that M1 chip, which is super efficient and works so well, especially for web browsing and that SSD performance. So I've got to say that I'm really happy with this and I would probably choose the 24 inch iMac over this $2,300, 27 inch iMac except if you really need that graphics performance or the extra CPU performance. If you absolutely need that, then maybe you would still get one of these guys or an upgraded version. But if you just need a basic computer and you are gonna be doing some productivity work, but not all the time, then I would still go for this 24 inch because this design is not gonna change for years. And that's gonna help it keep the resale value up compared to this 27 inch, which is gonna be going out of style extremely soon, especially when the larger 30 inch M1X iMac comes. So, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, click the circle above to subscribe because we have those other M1 iPad Pro videos coming soon. Definitely check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.